In this Elden Ring video, I'm going to be showing you why Great Axes are the best weapon in Elden Ring. This is the 11th video in our series where we sort of go through all the weapons in a given weapon category, go through their pros and cons, and sort of give you information to help you decide which ones will be part of your build. Before we get into that, however, first let's talk a little bit about the pros and cons of this weapon class, as well as the styles of play that I think most players will use when using this weapon group. So let's take a look at the pros first. The first thing I think you can talk about is that they have insane damage per hit. Their damage that they do per swing, not their total DPS, but just on a single hit is very, very high. And some of the weapons in this group have higher damage than any other great weapon, like great swords or great hammers included. So very, very high damage weapon group. Secondly, they attack fairly fast, much faster than you would think, allowing them to chain R1 attacks together because enemies typically flinch when struck by one attack. So you can typically get off a full R1 chain uninterrupted with this weapon type. Additionally, 8 out of the 11 weapons in this group are infusible, making the vast majority of them the case, allowing you to you know, switch around Ashes of War and really tailor your build to that Ash of War with your weapon. And lastly, I think Great Axes probably more than any of the other weapon groups I've covered so far have a dynamically different way in which each weapon plays. That's not to say that they have a drastically different gameplay mechanic or they play drastically differently, but that the way they go about accomplishing their strategy, even though they might be similar strategies, is unique to each one of these weapons. Talking a little about the cons, they are a little bit shorter on average than great swords, so you're not going to get quite as much reach depending on which weapon you're using, so that can be a bit of a negative. Additionally, some of the more interesting infusible great axes, like the rusted anchor or butchering knife, there is only one of these per playthrough, so unless someone drops you a second one, there isn't really any way to dual wield these. So talking a little bit about the play styles, I think most people are either going to two-hand one great axe, they're going to try and dual wield, some of the lighter great axes like the great omen killer cleaver or the gargoyles great axe or they're probably going to do some sort of block counter build with a great shield and a great axe and that's because great shields typically have very high strength requirements most of these weapons do as well so they sort of fit naturally together although there are a couple ways that you can add incantations into playing with one of these weapons it's not as easy to add sorceries in my opinion without sacrificing a good amount of melee damage so I don't think you're going to see any too many people playing sorceries with these, but you might see some people playing like a faith style, strength faith build, which is pretty common with one of these weapon types. Having covered those briefly, let's move on to the unique great axes. The first up is the Gargoyle's Black Axe. The Gargoyle's Black Axe shares the default moveset of most other great axes and deals physical and holy damage. It's one of the lightest great axes in Elden Ring, weighing 8.5, and requires a lot of points in strength and faith and a few in dexterity in order to use. The Gargoyle's Black Axe, like most other Gargoyle's Black weapons, has exceptionally high attack rating, particularly at minimum requirements when compared with other weapons in Elden Ring. Unfortunately, you won't get this weapon until very far into the game in the mountaintops of the Giants, meaning you will likely have much higher stats than this when you finally get it. The sweet spot for this weapon is around 50 Strength and 50 Faith, with Strength providing more damage up until 50, at which point Faith will outperform Strength until it hits 50. From here, Strength remains the best scaling until 80, where you'll shift to Dexterity and then Faith once more. This makes this weapon viable in New Game Plus, but probably not too much further than that. Because the Gargoyle's Black Axe has relatively good Strength and Faith scaling, it makes a good weapon to pair with the Clawmark Seal. You can use this for buffs like Flame Grant Me Strength and Golden Bow or other spells somewhat effectively. When buffed with War Cry and these two incantations, you can reach over 1100 attack rating with no other equipment applied, which is very high. Since the Gargoyle's Black Axe is the shortest Great Axe in Elden Ring, you cannot acquire it until far into the game, and because it deals over 50% holy damage, which is heavily resisted near the end of the game, I don't recommend using this weapon on your first playthrough unless someone can drop you one. Instead, use it a New Game Plus, paired with a Gargoyle's Great Axe or the Clawmark Seal, or both, and perhaps the Old Lord's Talisman to maximize your buff time. Up next is the Winged Greathorn. The Winged Greathorn shares the default moveset of most other Great Axes and deals physical damage. It has an average weight for a Great Axe in Elden Ring, weighing 11, and requires a lot of points in Strength and some in Dexterity in order to use. The Winged Great Horn is not the king of all Great Axes and has lower than average length, is at the bottom of the pack when it comes to Great Axe damage, though it does have decent scaling, and its weapon skill, Soul Stifler, is not particularly useful outside of boss fights. However, this weapon is not to be overlooked. Soul Stifler can be used to debuff tough-to-kill enemies like bosses, increasing the damage they receive by 15% for 60 seconds as of patch 1.07. This allows you and your Spirit Ash or cooperators to be more effective in general. If you can also apply Frostbite, you will increase the total damage the target receives by a whopping 35%, 
which can be amazing in cooperative play and can make you the star of the show. The sweet spot for this weapon is at 50 strength and 50 dexterity, but it scales extremely well up to 80 in each of these stats, reaching over 800 attack rating. This makes this weapon phenomenal for New Game Plus and beyond, particularly since Soul Stifler will come in more handy as enemies get tougher to kill. I recommend using this weapon with another Great Axe that is cold infused in order to set the Frostbite status effect, or if another cooperator is taking care of this for you, or if you're using Freezing Pots for example, using it two-handed or with a Great Shield since you'll have high strength. And last up on our list of unique Great Axes is the Axe of Godric. The Axe of Godric shares the same R2 attack with a Crescent Moon Axe, which has a sweeping attack and a unique follow-up, and deals physical damage. It's an average weight Great Axe in Elder Ring weighing 11, and requires a lot of points in strength and dexterity in order to wield. The Axe of Godric is an okay Great Axe, and though it has low damage, it still has good reach, and you can acquire it relatively early on in the game by defeating Godric the Grafted. But there are some points that make it less useful than it could be. It has an amazing R2 attack that can AoE through many enemies at once, but because you have an Ash of War that does this better and I Command the Kneel, it becomes moot most of the time. Additionally, I Command the Kneel does not count as three separate strikes, but rather one strike, so you cannot trigger talismans like Winged Sword Insignia with it, which is a shame. The sweet spot for this weapon is around 50 Strength and 50 Dexterity, with Dexterity slightly outperforming Strength from here up to 80, but not by much. The weapon still scales well after 50, making it a good choice for New Game Plus and onward. I like to two-hand this weapon, gaining the extra damage from the strength scaling as well as using jump attacks with the Claw Talisman and Raptor's Black Feathers for high burst. I use I Command the Neo when I need to AoE multiple enemies, using Shard of Alexander to boost its damage. Moving to the non-unique Great Axes, first up is the Great Axe. The Great Axe shares the default moveset of most other Great Axes and deals physical damage. It is a very heavy Great Axe in Elden Ring, weighing 13, and requires a lot of points in strength and low dexterity in order to wield. The Great Axe is a phenomenal great weapon and has the highest base damage of all great weapons in Elden Ring, great axes, great swords, and great hammers. It can also be found extremely early on in the carriage pulled by the trolls in Limgrave, and though it still has high strength requirements, it can be two-handed relatively easily for only 20 strength. The downside of this weapon is that it's shorter than nearly every other great axe. Fire and Lightning topped the lists in terms of damage at a whopping 810 attack rating, followed by Magic and Sacred and Flame Art. Heavy is not too far behind here, and Cold is just behind Heavy, making it a solid choice if you still want decent strength scaling, but also want the Frostbite status effect. Because of its shorter reach, I don't recommend using it with a Great Shield, as it's less likely to connect on block counters if you're pushed back when blocking. However, you can use it two-handed with jump attacks for great results, and also using its charged R2s is very effective. If you go the Sacred or Flame Art route, you can also buff with Golden Vow and Flame Grant Me Strength, while using the Claw Mark Steel rather effectively. Up next is the Crescent Moon Axe. The Crescent Moon Axe shares the same R2 attack with the Axe of Godric, which has a sweeping attack and unique follow-up, and deals physical damage. It's a very heavy Great Axe in Elden Ring, weighing 12.5, and requires a lot of points in strength and summon dexterity in order to wield. The Crescent Moon Axe's claim to fame is of course its R2 and charged R2 attacks that have wide sweeps which are fantastic for AoEing many enemies at once. It has the third highest damage of all Great Axes, and it has longer reach than most other Great Axes, and it can be found early in the game by farming enemies in Stormvale Castle. Fire and Lightning is just one point behind the Great Axe in terms of damage, but Magic and Flame Art are more than a dozen points behind, and so are most other infusions, so I recommend going with Fire if you want to keep that high damage of the Great Axe, but like the range and moveset a bit more. You can two-hand this weapon with a good Ash of War like Flaming Strike, which I used in the Blazing Executioner build, or you can use it with a Great Shield due to your high strength. The Dexterity requirement makes it less likely to be used in a Clawmark Seal build, though, but it's still possible. Up next, we have the Longhaft Axe. The Longhaft Axe shares the default moveset of most other Great Axes and deals physical damage. It's a very heavy Great Axe in Elden Ring, weighing 12.5, and requires a lot of points in strength and a few in dexterity in order to wield. The Longhaft Axe is slightly longer than the Crescent Moon Axe and has slightly more damage in general, though lacks the same sweeping R2 attack that the Crescent Moon Axe has. It can also be found very early in Castle Morn dropping from misbegotten warriors that use this weapon, making the decision between these two weapons really up to the slight damage difference in moveset if you don't factor in fashion. The Long Haft Axe is closer to the damage of the Great Axe at most infusions than the Crescent Moon Axe, with Fire and Lightning being the exception which is the same. This makes it a better candidate if you don't want to use the Great Axe, but you want to use other infusions. As with the Crescent Moon Axe, you can two-hand this weapon with a good Ash of War like Sword Dance, or you can use it with a Great Shield due to your high strength. Up next is the Executioner's Great Axe. The Executioner's Great Axe shares the default moveset of most other Great Axes and deals physical damage. It's the heaviest Great Axe in Elden Ring, weighing 15, 
and requires a lot of points in strength and a few in dexterity in order to use. The Executioner's Great Axe is arguably the best all-around Great Axe in Elden Ring. It has the longest reach of all Great Axes, it's in the upper middle of the pack in terms of total attack rating, and it has 115 critical. Its high critical will allow you to devastate stance-broken enemies and players, and no other Great Axe has higher than the default 100 critical rating. Much like other Great Axes, Fire and Lightning tops the list with Magic and Flame Art pretty much tied for second, and Heavy and Cold pretty much tied for third. Cold is always a great option to gain about the same damage you would get from Heavy, but add the Frostbite status effect, especially if you're not planning to two-hand. The long reach of this weapon makes it superb for a block counter build with a great shield, and since block counters often stagger enemies in one hit, you'll make good use of that high critical damage. You can even add the Dagger Talisman for more critical. Up next is the Great Omen Killer Cleaver. The Great Omen Killer Cleaver shares the default moveset of most other Great Axes and deals physical damage. It has an average weight for Great Axe in Elden Ring, weighing 11, and requires a lot of points in strength and some in dexterity in order to wield. The Great Omen Killer Cleaver is a fantastic Great Axe, though it does slightly less damage than most other infusible Great Axes. However, it is the only Great Axe that has native bleed buildup on hit, more than making up for this, and it's also one of the longest Great Axes in the game. The downside is that you cannot find this weapon until much further in the game in Volcano Manor and Perfumer's Grotto. Surprisingly, the Fire Infusion is only 24 points behind the Great Axe in terms of damage, which isn't all that much, so I recommend using this infusion if you're planning a straight melee build. The Great Omen Killer Cleaver has very low requirements for a Great Axe, making it a bit more versatile. It makes a great candidate to dual wield two of these for jump attacks and bleed buildup, and it can be used with a Clawmark Seal or a Great Shield, so there are really many ways to use it. Just swap it out when facing bleed immune enemies for a Great Axe with higher damage if you can. Next is the Rusted Anchor. The Rusted Anchor shares the default moveset of most other Great Axes and deals physical damage. It's a very heavy Great Axe in own ring, weighing 12.5, and requires a lot of points in strength and few in dexterity in order to wield. The Rusted Anchor is a unique Great Axe, not only in terms of appearance, but also because it deals pierce damage. Pierce damage is increased while striking enemies while they're mid their attack animation called counter damage, which makes this weapon particularly deadly if you like to R1 spam or jump attack. Additionally, you can use the Spear Talisman to further boost this damage. The Rusted Anchor is not the longest Great Axe, however, and it is in the bottom half of Great Axes when it comes to length. Its damage, though, is just behind the Crescent Moon Axe, and it can be found in Morn Tunnel, which is very early on in the game. The weapon is best used on an aggressive build that aims to continue attacking through enemy attacks in order to deal counter damage as often as possible. So look to stack poise and do jump attacks with the Claw Talisman or R1 attacks, and make sure to use the Spear Talisman for increased counter damage. Next, we come to the Butchering Knife. The Butchering Knife has a unique R2 attack that is similar to the Magma Worm Scale Sword, where you grab the blade in both hands and push down, and it deals physical damage. It is one of the lightest Great Axes in Elden Ring, weighing 8.5, and requires some points in strength and several in dexterity in order to wield. The Butchering Knife doesn't seem all that great at first glance. It deals the second lowest damage of all infusible Great Axes, and you cannot find it until you defeat Anastasia Tarnished Eater near the Shaded Castle. However, it's extremely lightweight for a Great Axe, it has the lowest strength requirements of Great Axes, it's the second longest Great Axe, and it restores 1% HP per hit with this weapon. Keen is actually a viable option for this weapon compared with other Great Axes simply because of the low strength requirements and because the weapon itself deals much more damage when set to the Keen Affinity versus Heavy, which isn't the case with most other Great Axes. I'd recommend using this weapon in some sort of fashion that makes best use of life on hit, such as using Wild Strikes and High Poise to tank hits while you regain HP. Additionally, stacking other HP regain effects such as Taker's Cameo or the Blessed Dew Talisman could also help, and if you decide to use a shield, you could put Holy Ground on it for increased healing or use the Icon Shield, which has passive HP regeneration as well. Ricard's Great Rune is also an option here as this gives you HP back on kill, which will help keep your HP topped up, and if you're using the Mimic tier, it will gain the effects of this passive healing from your equipment, which will make it very hard to kill. And the last Great Axe we've come to is the Gargoyle's Great Axe. The Gargoyle's Great Axe shares the default moveset of most other Great Axes and deals physical damage. It's one of the lightest Great Axes in Elden Ring, weighing 8.5, and requires a lot of points in strength and few in dexterity in order to wield. The Gargoyle's Great Axe deals the lowest damage of all infusible Great Axes, has the second shortest reach, and isn't found until you defeat the Gargoyle on Altus Plateau, which means it'll be some time before you get it. Additionally, it has tremendous heavy scaling, but because of its low base damage, it is still outperformed by every other Great Axe save the Butchering Knife when set to the Heavy Affinity. Because the Great Axe outperforms this weapon in terms of damage, even when compared against the 99 strength version of this weapon, it is recommended you don't use this weapon unless you really need the lower equip weight. If you still wish to use this weapon though, I'd recommend doing so in a dual Great Axe build that uses this and the Gargoyle's Black Axe, since they are both about the same length and they both weigh much less than other Great Axes. 
This will allow you to use them without equipment weight issues and do jump attacks successfully. Be sure to set the Gargoyle's Great Axe to Sacred or Flame Art Affinity. That wraps up our video on Great Axes, and I hope you guys learned something about the weapons in this category. There is actually quite a large difference between most of the weapons here, and it's a ton of fun to play with each and every one of them. Stay tuned for more Elden Ring content as we go through some more build guides and some other Elden Ring related videos. If you guys have a weapon category that you would like to see next, please let me know in the comments. This will probably shape which video I do next.